of the wicked, O God, let those that begin to dry up now. Let those that begin to dry up now. All the wicked hands of the wicked, I command to begin to dry up now. 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 rent has expired. Pray as I approach the landlord for more little, for more time. God will grant me divine favor. As the person has written, so the Lord will do for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Another person has written, I said we should pray. Somebody is sick. We want to pray that God will heal him. Heal her. Of that sickness, that terminal sickness, that untimely disease, that killer disease in his body, that God will heal him instantaneously in Jesus' name. Yeah. I want to pray every other prayer request. Oh God, attend to every request. Open your mouth and call upon God. Father, we pray the name of Jesus. The Bible says I will go before you. I will make the book of the places straight. Oh God, I pray the name of Jesus for this writer that needs favor. Father, go before him. Not only supply, oh God, Father, give him favor before the landlord, oh God. I pray, Father, you will provide for him. You will supply his needs. He will be able to pay off. And even, Father, from there, oh God, before the end of this year, he will move to his own house, you know, his own apartment. He changes just me. Father, for that person that is sick, oh Lord, I pray, you are the owner of the body. You made the body. You created the body. Oh God, I pray, anyone, oh God, Father, that is sick, that is having terminal disease, oh God, disease in the cell, disease in the tissue, disease in the organ, disease in the system, oh God, I pray, in the name of Jesus, I command, let the blood of Jesus, oh God, flow into that body from the tip of the earth to the tip of the toe, wash away and flush out every disease, every calamity, every problem, every mountain, every killer disease, every terminal disease, every eliminating, eliminating disease in that body, in Jesus' name, oh God, we where you need to put another organ, put another organ in that body. Put another cell in that body. Where you need to flush out the old blood to put another new blood. Father, let it be done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a battle I want uh, us to fight. God is going to lead us in the battle, uh, but it's not strange to me on this online. Uh, by the grace of the Lord, we are going to win the battle in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember particularly when one of our sisters want to pass an exam, and they will seriously focus it. And then what will be the result? The exam the sister has been doing for more than five years. She came out successfully when we started praying. For some of us who, are, who know the time and we're online, we can remember the, the period. So I want us to take this battle like that period. It may take us a month, it may take us two months, it may take us three months, until that person shares the testimony. 
by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to find the battle uh, positively in Jesus' name. Before then, I, I want to tell us that our attendance is now more encouraging. I don't know why. So I want the leader to take note of it. If there's anything need to be done, they should let us know. So there's a brother that went into marriage. Actually, he was disappointed. He's a member of the church, and then he was disappointed. Pastor Peter, you're listening to this very well, because last time uh, we prayed for that brother. Pastor Peter said the brother is even being manipulated. I tried to send uh, Pastor uh, uh, Morigi to the Pastor Peter that can he elaborate more so that the brother can be canceled on that area. So because we start, it's a story I know very well, and I know we are going to do the battle. The battle is going to be won. So the brother is disappointed in the first time in the marriage. He decided to marry from the church, but he couldn't make it. And then the brother is getting to an age as a result of that. Not that he couldn't wait, but unfortunately, he married from outside the church. Uh, not the church didn't support, church supports. They, but they gave him a warning that you are our son and then we train you up to this level but you want to marry now you couldn't see from the church do not forget i've told us some background there's see another background that we tell us uh, but we are going to support you for the marriage there's no problem you are still our son and you will continue to be our son to the extent that they have to send uh, a delegate from headquarters to him. But this is what we are going to do. Immediately, immediately you marry from day one, till as uh, God brings us together, or what do they say in the altar? Until God separates us, we don't want to hear thee. You can see the love of church, the love of the leaders in the life of the brother. This story I know very well. Um, so he went on marry, but do not forget one thing: the elders see beyond all what the people, all what the elders say along the line started to come me up. There's a one thing: the marriage in Pentecostal church, especially in deeper life, is easier to marry. Some, some, in some time, it's very difficult to marry. But you know what I'm saying? Because of the setup that they are guiding us. But the easier, it's easier in marriage. It's not possible. Divorce is not possible in marriage, in deeper life. Uh, because of many things, uh, when we say it's a church rule, you can't undo anything. Your workers, you can't undo. I mean, you can't do anything as a worker. Talk less of a leader. And what does mean? Immediately there is divorce, the person ministry has gone wrong, totally collapsed, except it goes to another church. Then which church are you going to do, go? Except being compromised. But we now call upon the name of the Lord. We have seen a little background. We are going to go into detail, but because the ministry of this brother will not go, uh, will not spoil in Jesus' name. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever be mistake, whatever be an error, God, if not because of something that Jesus Christ only have come, that by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever be an error, whatever be a mistake from him, from the spouse, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, Pastor Mike, you will round up. Uh, and Pastor Duke, uh, yeah, no, Pastor Peter, I know you are listening. Please, if there's anything, let Pastor Mike know so that we can talk about it. Because when we mentioned it last time, you said something very, very serious. So whatever be the sin of the brother, whatever be the sin of the sister, because of the marriage, because of the altar, because of both for better for world, because they have no any other God except God, Jesus Christ, the almighty God, we forgive them in Jesus' name. 
let us open our mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. I want you to open your mouth, unmute yourself, let the leader hear Father, you. we pray in the name of Jesus. Their yeah, ma- is better when you pray for their marriage now than you hear that they compromise and uh, a lot of suggestion, a lot of things being done. Oh, there is that brother, is that sister, so this thing can happen to them. Oh, there is no Christianity again. If that brother can do this, if that sister can do this, and then even the name of the child, the unbeliever, what do they want them to, to say? But I want you to know, if God, all things are possible. Whatever be the case, whatever be the sin of brother, whatever be the sin of the sister, that is making it that they are married because enmity. There is no friendship. There is no any intimacy. There is nothing. Again, the marriage is going to the rock. But to me, Lord of Jesus Christ. With the love of Jesus Christ, Almighty God is going to take total control in Jesus' name. Open your mouth, Pastor Paul. I can see you. You are muted. Pastor Luke, I can see you. You are unmuted. Pastor Shekmo, I can see you. You are muted. Call upon the name of the Lord on this on this particular people. And by the point of the Lord of Jesus, that whatever may be an error, whatever may be a mistake, whatever they might have done in the beginning, yes, the church won. But no, the blood of Jesus Christ is still there. He has let us know that you may do your will. We will pray the wound is going to be here, but the scar will be there. But God is the God of scar. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, Almighty God, we uproot, we delete. We 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 Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord that God will uphold this family. The God of God will uphold this family. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We take it as a series because I mean it. And I know we are mean a lot of things on prayer line like that. A lot of things like that. I remember one of our brother for 12 years, no child. No child. By the time we mean it on this prayer line, he has a boy. I think I've shared the testimony. We mean this one too. Devil is going to be a uh, uh, devil is going to lose the battle in Jesus' name. Amen. And, uh, Will of the Lord is going to is going to come to power. What is the will of the Lord? That their soul should prosper as they, I mean as they should prosper as their soul is prosper in ministry, financially, in everything of their life. In Jesus, Pastor Mike, because of our time, please stand up for us and pray for them purposely. And sorry, sir. Sorry, just just a minute, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Oh, sir. We are hearing you. Please, in addition to that, I want uh, I want Pastor Mike to also li- to also pray for those uh, for the child that was kidnapped and uh, that uh, the, my the neighbor of that my friend that was simply that the wife was also kidnapped as well. The, the kidnapper they are demanding four hundred thousand from uh, the, the brother in, in, in uh, concern. So it's not from our church. It's from my other ministry, and uh, they are still negotiating. But my prayer for him, for the for the girl as well as the neighbor, is that they will release them unconditionally, and that is the prayer request. Please, thank you, Pastor Amen. Mike. Amen. Amen. Hello, we are joining our prayers together, our faith together to pray. The Bible says, I, I know God. I know the God I serve. I know. I know the God I serve. God cannot lie. God cannot fail. God is God forever. We are uniting our faith together. We are issuing a decree right now. Wherever that child is that has been kidnapped, you know, I can put myself in the shoe of the parents. 
I know the condition of the parents now. I know how the shoe is pinching them. I know how the family is now in disarray. Oh, Father, we come before you. We know that with God, all things are possible. Father, I am praying and I am asking, Lord, you have done it before when you showed Pharaoh who you are. Oh God, Pharaoh was having your first born. Oh, they went to captive. And you told Pharaoh, let my people go. He refused. Father, you sent the plig number one. You sent plig number two. You sent plig number three. You sent plig number four. When they go to plig number ten, Pharaoh handed off and said, now I let you go. Father, I pray, Father, wherever that boy, boy is or that girl is who has been kept down, I command, oh God, plig number one, visit that tabernacle where they are, where they are kept. In the name of Jesus, pick number two, visit that foundation, visit that. In the name of Jesus, pick number three, pick number four, pick number five, pick number five, six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and pick number ten, upon the household, and the power house, and the house of authority, where the enemy are, the camp of the wicked. Oh God, I pray, let the plea visit that place, and let that boy, let that child be released. Oh God, unconditionally, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come before you. We look up to you. We pray for mercy for that brother in God. Lord, you said you will have mercy upon whom you have mercy. If you could show the thief on the cross mercy, I know you will show this brother mercy. Oh God, I pray. Wherever the brother is, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, oh God, no matter the condition of his life now, no matter how far he has gone, oh Lord, I pray, wherever you, he is, wherever he is, let your mercy locate him in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray, let your mercy set to him. Amen. Let Amen. Let mercy set to him. Let mercy set to him. Amen. Let mercy set to him. Amen. Oh God, I use that brother as a point of contact. Anyone, oh God, anyone online, anyone here now, anyone in our friends, families, anyone, oh God, who needs, oh God, Father, that mercy of the Lord. Oh God, I pray, let your mercy locate every one of us at the point of our knees. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Amen. We Let only your name be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering prayers. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace, Pastor. Omari, they didn't remember the the brother we are praying for about the marriage. But that's okay. Let us all have it in mind uh, that the grace of the Lord will be sufficient and the, their marriage will be old in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's share the grace together. Uh, we shall meet uh, tomorrow evening for the Assyrian uh, The pastors you have seen, the you know somebody wrote from New Jersey about our program. And that one should be continue to encourage us. The joy of the Lord will be our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and evermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Peter and Pastor Omarike. Please, uh, after the prayer, let us have. Uh, talk for about five minutes. Uh, although I still have another program immediately, but uh, we can quickly talk. Thank you. God bless you. Please let us continue to invite people. Our attendance is going down. We have not been seeing Pastor Dako. And I'm, I'm not hearing any report about him. Please. Uh, sir, he, he, he is the one supposed to lead today, but he is busy. Okay. That's why I have to come up. But okay. by the grace of God, next week he will be online. Okay, please let us increase our uh, awareness to the people. God bless us in this Thank you. Okay. Pastor Amen. Peter and Pastor da and Omarige, please. Immediately, let us we have a uh, talk. I have a meeting after this. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Okay, sir. Uh,
Uh, Pastor Peter will have it on, on the on the WhatsApp. Pastor Peter and Pastor Omari on the WhatsApp. On the WhatsApp. Pastor Shagun, if you are still online, please, after the meeting, maybe around 12, you can call me, please. Jonah chapter 4, verse 9. And God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the God? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. See a man like this talking to God like he was talking. How do we forget so soon? When he had his trouble, when he was in the storm, when he was in the belly of the whale, did you see the way he prayed? Did you see his language and address to God? Did you, Did see, you see the sign of reverence and the fear of God? Did you see his comportment when he was praying to God? Oh God, God must see on me. He that deserves life by my tears will forsake his own mercy. I'll be foolish, but now will pay my vow. I will sacrifice unto the Lord with the tongue of the mouth of praises. It was, it was respectful. There was reverence. It was a part of, of his coming, of his trouble. Now, now it was asked. And, and the Lord gave him the ministry, the ministry again. again. And then he came to the ministry now. See what has happened. And I see the way he was talking to God. Do you do well to be angry, Jonah? Yes, I do well to be angry. Even today, is it like that with you? When the when chastisement when was, was heavy upon you, you. And, when and when the Lord, 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 the Lord, Lord was going after you, you because, because of something you have done, done. Are, are you sober? Are, are, are you repentant? Really did you reverence God? Did you see God? God? If, if you will accept me back from the way of my backsliding, if you will give me a chance again to serve you, oh Lord, I will serve you. And then, after you are responding to that service, what's your attitude? Attitude towards God. Attitude towards the work of God. Attitude towards the ministry that the Lord has committed to your hand. Did you, you go back, back to the same careless relationship with the Almighty God? That's the show now. And it's a bad attitude. It's an attitude, attitude of being ungrateful. That what the Lord had pardoned him for. And the Lord had mercy on us. Now God will have mercy upon the people. But he will not appreciate that. And then he said, I do well to be angry. Even today, then say, Said, 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 thou hast had pity, the God, for the wheat, for the wheat, thou hast not labored, neither made it grow. Wheat came up in a night and perished in a night. Should not I fear in a bit that that great city, wherein I am more than six thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand. And also, also march, march at, 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 now, now, what reasons do we have? So, so that, that we can, can show this compassion. So, so that, that we can show this attitude of gratitude, of gratitude unto the Lord. Lord. What reasons do we have that God has forgiven us? us. We, we ought to forgive other people. people. God, God has forgiven us. We ought to make a way. And I've been you, so that, so that they 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 they'll be able to receive the forgiveness of the Lord. Because we have had the mercy of God, we also ought to make that mercy of God available for other people. That's a reason for wanting to have compassion on the people that are in their sins. Let's look at the word of God. The reasons, the reasons for missionary compassion. What are the reasons? Number one, compassion on the ignorant. Number one, compassion on the ignorant. God said, Jonah, look at Nineveh. There are 120,000 people there. That's made of six score. A score is 20. 
six core is 20 times six, 120. 120,000 people there, totally ignorant. And we need to have compassion on the ignorant. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant? Many people are ignorant, ignorant of their salvation, ignorant of the possibility of getting saved, ignorant of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, ignorant of the fact that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They are ignorant. That's one of our reasons to have compassion on the people that are ignorant of the way of salvation. Reasons for missionary compassion. Number two, the consciousness of the invisible. The consciousness of the invisible. The invisible one. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 27. It's talking about Moses. Hebrews 11, verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. That means it was, he had the consciousness of the invisible one, the consciousness of the Almighty and the demand of the Almighty. I'm asking you, are you conscious of the invisible one? As you minister here, are you conscious of the invisible one? As you serve the Lord, are you conscious of the invisible one? As you go out to evangelize, are you conscious of the invisible one? As you go on missionary field, are you so faithful? Because you are conscious of the invisible one in the secret place, in the public place where you minister. Are you conscious of the invisible one? consciousness of the invisible. That's what makes us to endure. That's why we endure. Enduring for the salvation of the lost. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul the Apostle said, I have a lot of things to endure. And I endure them. And you know why I endure them? Because of the salvation of the people that need to be saved. Number one, compassion on the ignorant. Number two, the consciousness of the invisible. Number three, concern for the indifferent. Concern. Concern for the indifferent. You know, there are people that do not know that judgment is even coming. They are indifferent. And because they are indifferent, we, we need to have compassion on them. And we need to see how we'll make the gospel to reach out unto them. In Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Verses 41 and 42. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Concern, concern, concern. As you hear about the crime in the city. As you see, many people dying, being ushered into eternity without being prepared. And being ushered into eternity without salvation. Are you concerned? Are you thinking about them? Does it bother you at all? Or is it just, Lord, give me house, give me husband, give me wife, give me children, give me money, give me this, give me that? Are you concerned for the people who are indifferent? Then in verse 42, saying, if thou art known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things will belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Concern for the indifferent. Number four, consecration with intercession. Consecration with intercession. 
You see, when you know the, lo the lostness of humanity, and you see the condition of the people of the world, there will be one seed that will be essential to you, and it will be to preach the gospel to the people that need to hear. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted, and they were scattered abroad, as sheep having no shepherd. As sheep having no shepherd. And now, then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest, into his harvest. Intercession, pray. You ever pray? Analyze your prayers. Analyze the, analyze the prayer of the individual, the prayers of the family, the prayers in the house fellowship, the prayers in the zone, the prayers in your district, the prayers in the church at large. Analyze them. Do we have this concern? Does it bother us at all? The harvest truly is plenteous and the laborers are few. It's not talking about we don't have enough coordinators. That's not what he's talking about. We don't have enough women coordinators in the church. That's not what he's talking about. We don't have enough instrumentalists in the choir. That's not what he's talking about. We don't have enough ushers, enough security. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about evangelism. He's talking about the people that are perishing. And he says the field is ripe. And the harvest is plenteous, but there are not enough laborers to go out and reach out unto them. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He's telling us then to have consecration with intercession. Number five, communication of the divine interest. Communication of the divine interest. What's God's interest? What's God interested in? What's the desire of God? He's told us, I've read it to you in Jonah. I'll have pity on them. I will have compassion on them. Because they're ignorant. They know nothing. They cannot discern between their left and their right. I must have compassion on them. What is the interest of God? Communication of the divine interest. Communicate it to yourself. Communicate it to your family. Communicate it to your Christian friends. Encourage your Christian friend. Encourage your brother. Encourage your sister. The interest of the Almighty God. What's that interest? Let me show you in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says the Lord God. And not that he should return from his ways and live. That's the interest of the Almighty, the divine interest. Communicate that to everyone. God has no pleasure that your neighbors will perish. God has no pleasure that the people around you will perish. Let that be the center of your very heart. In verse 31, cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. Says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live. That's the divine interest. He doesn't have any pleasure in the death, in, the, in any sinner perishing. Chapter 33 of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. See unto them. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Communicate the divine interest. God wants everyone to be saved. Get involved in it. Reach out to the people. Do it in your community. Do it in your city. Do it in your nation. Do it outside your nation. Do it everywhere. Change your vision, your desires, your interest, your focus, change everything. I've said it before, and it's like the church is settling down. 
And as if you know what I know, if you see what I see, the concern and the burden. And you know, sometimes it's like, why is he doing like that? I told you before, if we took somebody out of the choir and then we said, please go and lead a local church and be a pastor, the choir will be shaking and trembling. They'll be, they'll be pulling this and pulling this, plugging this and, you know, removing that. Why? Because somebody in the choir, he ought to remain in the choir forever and forever. And to be a pastor and to be a preacher and to be an evangelist and go out and reach the people and communicate the divine interest. No, that's not there anymore. Take somebody from the ushers. Take somebody from the security and say, you be a missionary. Go to such and such a place. Then they begin to imagine. They begin to visualize. What happened yesterday? Ah, that man must have offended the pastor. And because he must have offended the pastor, that's why the pastor is taking him from being an usher to make him a pastor, to make him an overseer, to make him a missionary. You see that attitude? Because we do not understand the divine interest. Take somebody here out of Lagos. Just maybe a coordinator or a group coordinator and make him a state overseer. And then there's confusion everywhere. Everything breaks down. And then we begin to imagine, ah, uh, that group coordinator must have offended the pastor. There must have been something that went wrong. Otherwise, why will the pastor remove a group coordinator and make him a state overseer? You see the attitude. You see the loss of vision that the Lord is telling us. Don't be like Jonah. Don't be like Jonah. Come out of Israel. Come out of everywhere you are. Come out of the whole of the dungeon where you are. Nineveh is to perish. Go out to Nineveh and go and tell the people of Nineveh, you don't have to perish. There is mercy with God and God will help you. You respond in Jesus' name. Now, if the church now, look up here. If deeper life now were to settle down, choir, stay where you are forever. Ushers, stay where you are forever. Electronics people, stay where you are forever. Drivers, stay where you are forever. Whatever you are doing now, that's all right. Forever, stay like that. Who will become pastors? Am I the only one that will run here, run there? This year alone, from January this year to December, I've been to India, I've been to Singapore, I've been to Germany, I've been to France, I've been to England, I've been to America, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to how many places? And then in Nigeria here, I've been to Port Harcourt, I've been to Calabar, I've been to Benin, and I've been to last week or the other week, about one and a half weeks ago, I was in the Kitty stage. Is it only me? Can I do it all alone? No. Why are we all sitting down? And then if we say get up and go there, it's like, what did I do? What did you do? What did Jesus do? He died on the cross. And because Jesus died on the cross, that's the reason why we need to go out and tell them, in fact, why do you need to wait for me? Why should I come and pick up on you? Don't you have any dream? Don't you have any vision? Don't you have any passion? Don't you have any something, something stirring in your heart? Why don't you come yourself? I think now I volunteer. If, you, if, if God leads you to make me a pastor, I'm available. If God leads you uh, to make me a missionary, I'm available. Where are they? As large as Lagos Church is. As large as all these choir members are. We are more than 4,000 choir members in Lagos alone, all together. Are we going to just sit down there playing violin and playing trumpet? Who is going to preach? Who is going to declare the word of God? And then when we talk about it, it's like it's talking to the rest of the people. We are not concerned. Of course we are concerned because we need to communicate the divine interest. And then he tells us, number, number, four, number six, the condemnation of the insensitive. The condemnation of the insensitive. The people, that they, they don't care. It doesn't bother them. The condemnation of the insensitive. In Lamentation chapter 1. Lamentation chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. Lamentation chapter 1 verse 12. Is it nothing to you? 
Is it nothing to you? The condemnation of the insensitive, is it nothing to you? All ye that pass by, behold and see, if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. Now, take those words to be the words of Jesus. That the Lord laid, Almighty God laid our iniquity, our sin upon him. And then the Lord said, look at my agony and look at my suffering. Is it nothing to you? What if I came to you? Well, thank God for the few people that are still available. And they are not thinking, well, did I offend the pastor? Where are they, where are they need in one stage? And then we had one of our coordinators here. It wasn't even a group coordinator, just a coordinator. And he was working in the bank. I called him. You know, the people were having uh, interviews for this, interviews for that on Saturday at Bagada. And then we had this need there in another state in Nigeria. The state overseer there had relocated and gone outside Africa. And we had somebody, and I, and I prayed, and I thought, and I said, Lord, what am I going to do? We cannot leave a whole state vacant without giving them a state overseer. And then the Lord impressed on my heart the name of a particular coordinator in Lagos here. And I was thinking, <laughs> as the church is now, how can you just open your mouth and talk to this coordinator? It's working in the bank. And then I got to Bagada that Saturday. And I went around. I knew he would be there to interview people. And then I called him. I said, please, can you see me in the office? And then he saw me. I said, uh, I think I know you're working. He smiled. said, yes, I'm working in the bank. I said, I'm going to ask you a difficult question. Can you tell me the salary you're earning? And he gave me a big, big figure. I said, is that so? You young person, you're earning so much. I, he didn't know where I was going. I said, you know something? That's a need. God has a need. The church has a need. The kingdom of God has a need. What are you going to do? The Lord is leading me to pick you up and send you to a state to be an overseer. But that money you are earning in the bank, no way we cannot pay you that. The brother smiled and said, he said to us, sir, I will go. I said, will you talk to your wife at home? Oh, he said, no problem. My wife will be in agreement. That's the consecration, the commitment of our lives. Within that week, we settled everything. The brother is now in that state as a state overseer. Don't clap. Don't clap. I'm sorry for you. You clap for other people about you. Can I come to you like that? You are just there. Can I come to you like that? Security people there. Can I come to you like that? All these leaders in the choir, you've been here in the church for 20 years and for 25 years, and you know the whole doctrine. When you preach, when I listen to you preach, you know it as much as any overseer in this land. Can I come to you like that? Can you leave your establishment? Can you leave your company? Can you have the mind of Christ and say, Lord, here am I. And if you're all sitting down there, and if we try to pick you up and make you do something else, it's like the pastor is fighting with us. The pastor is unhappy with us. That's why he wants more evangelists. That's why he wants more missionaries. Who is fighting with you? You don't know who is fighting with you. I'm your father. I can correct you. That's no fight. But the insensitive. The people that are not sensitive to the call of God, there's condemnation. Is it nothing to you? Look at the sorrow of Christ. And look at the passion in the mind of Christ. And he says, I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for people. Don't be like Jonah. Number seven, the commendation of the industrials. The commendation of the industrials. In Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. I'm going to, I'll teach you the scriptures. I'll teach you the scriptures. Occupy until I come. He wasn't thinking of choir. There was no choir in the ministry of Christ. He wasn't thinking of ushers. He wasn't thinking of security. Occupy until I come. There was one thing he was thinking about. 
evangelize, win the souls, bring them in, go and talk to them, and go and appeal to them. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Call them, bring them in. Occupy till I come. I am occupied, I'm in the choir. No, sir. I am occupied, I'm doing something in the church. No, sir. Occupy until I come. He wants you to take the gospel and go and tell the world and go and tell people everywhere Jesus died for every sinner and he wants you to say here is my life I lay it upon the altar occupy till I come when are you going to start when are you going to start I have started I have started and I go everywhere even when my voice is going yes I still do it and maybe some of you as you are listening to me and you are saying, why is the pastor shouting like this? His voice is gone. How about you there? You have the voice. Are you available? Are you available? I have to shout. Even when I lose my voice, even when things are dangerous, even when it appears no more strength, I still have to do Don't you know my age? All the same. All the same. Because I want this work to be done. Occupy till I come. That's why I'm doing it. Instead of opposing me, instead of contradicting me, instead of criticizing me, he has lost his voice. Why all this shouting? Why all this trouble? Instead of all that, why don't you say, look at this man. With no voice, look at this man. Everything is almost gone. Look at this man and he will not give up. He will not even excuse himself. Why did he just say, okay, everybody, you understand? I was in the program the other time. I'm in the program now. And you see the condition of things. Tomorrow there will be no Bible study. We're not going to make any allowance at all. Everybody will rejoice. You will not blame me. You will not say that I'm lazy. You will say, well, the pastor has tried, but I will not give up anything. If I will do that, in what way are you going to copy me? In what way are you going to resemble me? In what way are you going to say, like father, like child, this man running up and dying, running up and down, occupy till I come. I'm going to be like him. Anybody there? I said anybody there? Where are you? Where are you? Will you pray? I prayed. I gave myself to the Lord. I laid everything on the altar. And I said, Lord, my life, my voice, my heart, my talent, my mathematics, my lecturing, my property, my family. I laid everything on the altar. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. How about you? When are you going to start? I know music too. Am I going to just stay on music, music, music? Will music save the people without the preaching of the gospel? Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. And come and lay everything on the altar. And instead of just saying, I about this, I about that, forget all that. And come to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Lay it on the altar. Be available. Be available. Be available. Do this work. Occupy till I come. Be ready to preach the gospel. Be ready to preach the gospel with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your talent, with all your ability. Be ready to preach the gospel. Volunteer, make yourself available. Volunteer, make yourself available. Volunteer, and make yourself available. Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come.
occupy till I come. Is it nothing to you that the souls are perishing? Have compassion on the ignorant. Have the consciousness of the invisible. Have concern for the indifferent. Let there be consecration with intercession. And the communication of divine interest. Divine interest. There's condemnation for the insensitive, the inactive. Condemnation for the insensitive, but commendation for the industrials. Bring all you have to the Lord. Bring all your heart to the Lord. Your heart, your talent, your skill, your ability, be available. Be available. Have the mind of Christ. He died to save the lost. Offer yourself. Present yourself to the Lord. Volunteer. Let us know you are available. Let us know you are willing. Let us know you are ready. The call is there for everyone. It's not a call to an easy life. Not because of money. Not because of fastly rewards. Be available. There's condemnation for the insensitive. With all that we're saying, all that the word of God is revealing to us, if you are insensitive, there's condemnation. Be available. Offer your service to the Lord. Say, Lord, here I am. I am ready. I am willing. I will serve. Praise the Lord. Amen. Rise up as we pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you very much for the Bible study tonight. Thank you because you brought us together so you can impart your vision and revelation to everyone. We pray, Lord, as we come today before you, we'll stand before you as your real children, eager to hear what you have to tell us. And whatever you tell us, you grant us the grace to be obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that every believer will realize the ministry that you have given each of us and will be fruitful and fulfilled in that ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that we will not be barren, we will not be fruitless, 
but the fruit of our labor will be in the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Anoint my lips as I teach, and anoint the ears of the people that hear, and make our heart to be stirred up to rise up and do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at Jonah chapter 3. If you have been following us, you will know that we treated verses 2, 3, and 4 before. But now we're going to look at those three verses again. Jonah chapter 3, reading from verse 2. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. We come to an important message tonight as we look at the content of the evangelistic message. We've been dealing with evangelism. And evangelism is a ministry by itself, an important ministry of the church, an important ministry of every believer, an important ministry of the believers then and the believers now. As we think about, about evangelism, and we think about this ministry, there are three things that are very important. Number one, the man. Number two, the message. Number three, the ministry. Let me start with the ministry. We want the ministry to be fruitful. And so that is going to depend on the kind of man that is involved in that evangelism. Number two, we want the ministry fulfilling. If the ministry is going to be fulfilling, fulfilling for the preacher, fulfilling for the evangelist, fulfilling for God himself, and fulfilling for Christ who died for us, and he died for all sinners, then again it go, goes back to the man. And it's from the man you get the message. Without the man, you don't have the message. But if the man is all right, and the message is all right, then the ministry, number one, will be fruitful. Number two will be fulfilling. Number three will be flourishing. Not just that you have results now, and then after that you don't have results anymore. You keep on having results, results, results. Let's come to the man. What kind of man? will be involved in a fruitful ministry, a fulfill, fulfilling ministry, a flourishing ministry. Number one, he must be saved. No blind man can lead another one, both of them will fall to the ditch. A child of hell cannot lead another person to heaven, impossible. Somebody in darkness cannot lead another one to the light, therefore he must be saved. Number two. He must be separated, separated from the world. If you're going to win people out of the world, you'll not be part of them. Just like if you're falling to the well, another person has fallen to the well. The two of them inside the well cannot deliver themselves. Neither can A in the well deliver B in the well. One must come out before he can deliver the other one inside the well. Number two, then, he must be a separated man. Number three, is a sanctified man. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, purge yourselves, therefore, from all these, and then you'll be sanctified and prepared unto every good work. Number four, he must be spirit-filled. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Number five, he must be saturated with scripture. You let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, so that you'll be able to admonish other people, counsel other people, preach to other people, lead other people out of their sin and lead them to the Savior. Number six, he must be stable and steadfast. If he is up and down, today is dry, tomorrow is fresh. And then the other day he's drained. And then he doesn't know what to do again. Today is on the mountain top, tomorrow is in the valley. It's not stable, it's not steadfast. He will not be able to have a continuing ministry. And then number seven, he's supplicating. That means he's prayerful. 
Did you hear Paul when Paul the Apostle said, The desire of my heart and the prayer of my heart is that Israel might be saved. We have these seven qualities in the heart of a man, in the life of a man. He's ready, he's prepared to do the work the Lord has called him to do. And if his message is right, the man is righteous. His message is right. The combination of those two, the man and the message, righteous man, and a right message, will be able to have the kind of ministry that will produce fruit. What kind of message then should he have? Number one, the message must be clear. The message must be clear. Without the clarity of the message, there will be confusion. And if the sinners were preaching to our confused, are they going to get saved? They wouldn't even know what to pray about, what to pray for.